let's look at the Burgers equation, for example. Burgers. My speed of the shock would be equal to UL, UL square over 2 minus UR square my, uh, my over 2 UL minus UR. And this only works for the Burgers equation, but if you express the difference in squares in terms of the summation times the difference, right? So we are going to get a half of UL plus UR, UL minus UR. And UL minus UR, that cancels out. That gives me UL plus UR over 2. So again, it only works for Burgers equation. Don't generalize this. <laughs> Is that the speed of the discontinuity is equal to the average between the speed of the characteristics on the left and the speed of the characteristics on the right. Okay, so for, for example, again, uh, if you look at if you look at here, uh, the merge of the two shocks, you, you basically get the speed of the shock equal to the average between the characteristics to the left and the characteristics to the right. So the characteristics to the left has a positive speed, it goes to the right. The one at the right has a negative speed almost of the same magnitude. The result, the discontinuity moving at zero speed, going vertical. All right. So why is it curved? So why is it curved? Why does it change slope? Well, yes? Can you all and you can change Yes, you and you can change. For example, when you are at this segment, okay, UL is the same as over here, but UR has changed. In the lower part of this shock, UR is this value almost equal to zero. But once you go up to here, UR has changed to this very negative region. That is why the shock suddenly turned. Over here, the, the slope of the, the speed of the shock is equal to the average between the speed on the left and a zero speed. While here, it is the average between a positive one and a negative one. That's how it changes speed. All right. I can also manufacture cases that is uh, that have the shock turn continuously. Okay, so how do I do that? How should I manufacture a case where the shock is going to turn continuously? Let me do that. Let me manufacture a shock that I get a shock. Okay, so this shock should move towards the right because both left and right has uh, positive values but let me do something like this okay and see how the shock is going to turn initially I'm sure it is going to move towards the right because if you look at the solution on both on the left and right of the shock wave, it is positive, right? But you can see also these characteristics, they are less deep and they are going to run into the shock wave in no time. And as they run into the shock wave, the value immediately at the right of the shock wave is going to change. It is going to become higher or lower. How do you compute the various moving lines? Because the top part is moving right, so the right part is moving. Can you can you say again? The top part is moving towards the right, but the bottom part is moving towards the left. Yeah, I'm just focusing on the discontinuity here. So initially, I have this discontinuity that moves towards the right, but as these continuous characteristics run into the shock 
the value immediately on the right of the curve is going to change almost continuously. I mean, to, to the right of the shock is going to change almost continuously. Right, so, so if you zoom in into here, uh, oh, that's not very good. So, so you see this one runs into the shock, another one runs into the shock. I mean, these characteristics go into the shock everywhere. As things run into the shock, the value at the right side of the shock changes. It, in, it decreases, right? Originally, this is almost yellow, now it's almost blue. And as the value on the right of the shock decreases, the speed of the shock should decrease. So that's why you see this obvious curvature towards the left. Does it make sense? And now I don't know what's going to happen because the left side is also starting to decrease. So, so I think both sides, uh, so both, both the value at the left and value at the right is decreasing. That makes the whole shock should curve, curve towards the left uh, pretty fast. I think pretty soon. So right now, the positive side is still a little bit higher than the negative side. It ha has a larger magnitude as the negative side, but pretty soon we'll have a zero speed. Right now it's probably have a zero speed now. It's almost vertical and the shock is going to turn towards the left as the negative side wins over the positive side. All right. Any questions? When we first derive the speed of the shock, yes. how do we know there will be like a shock when the UL and UL doesn't change? Instead? I think we assume they don't change the value and then calculate the speed of the shock. Um, yes, we, we assumed that the left and right doesn't change value over infinitesimal time step, right? Yeah. And uh, so the question is a very good question is what is why is it appropriate to do that? So let me stop the MATLAB and uh, go into do some more analysis. Uh. <laughs> Right, so let's go back to our original derivation. So the question is a really good one. So why is it appropriate to assume UL and UR doesn't change much over the, the delta T? The answer is it does change, but the magnitude of influence of that change to what I'm deriving here is at a higher order in terms of DT than what I've written down here. So imagine UR and UL are also changing in a continuous fashion. So U, UR, instead of at this value, it, incre oh, it increases to over here. UL, instead of this value, it has maybe decreased to over here. So the question is, what is the contribution to the change of the integral from this part and this part, compared to this original box I was drawing here, the contribution of this part and this part is on the, of, on the order of, delta, of dt times epsilon, where dt, where the reason I said dt is the magnitude of this change is on the order of dt. And the, so the vertical side of this box is on the order of dt. The horizontal side of the box is on the, on the order of epsilon. The contribution to this is going to be epsilon times dt over dt, which is epsilon. This is why I chose this interval a and b to be a very small interval around, around the shock. I, particularly how small I can choose it is determined by the, the fact that the shock cannot move outside of the, the interval. So the size of epsilon should also be proportional to dt. That is why the contribution of these changing ul and ul, ul and ur to the whole, uh, to the difference is on the order of dt squared. And here to the derivative is on the order of dt. So when you choose dt to be small enough, this contribution can be safely ignored.